was really pleasantly surprised with what the Cardinals were able to do in the 2023 NFL Draft. New general manager Monty Osenfort just had an incredible weekend, in my opinion, trading down for the player that they maybe would have taken anyway at number three in Paris Johnson Jr. They got the Texans' first round pick in 2024 in the process. Of course, traded back up with the Lions. It was a very, very interesting draft weekend, and they came out on top, in my opinion. Big picks for the future, loaded up, and got some pretty good talent in the 2023 draft. Took some risks. Guys like Garrett Williams, injury, kind of a concern with him coming off a pretty huge injury. However, if he gets back to where he was at Syracuse fully healthy, he could be really, really good value in the third round. Let's talk about this class just a little bit. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is make sure we have the correct Cardinals picks in 2024. They have the Houston Texans first round pick and third round pick, as well as the Titans third round pick and then the Eagles fifth rounder. So they really, really loaded up on picks. They've done a tremendous job and the new general manager is going to be able to make the roster exactly what he wants it to be. So hopefully setting up the Cardinals for future success if you are a Cardinals fan. For those always asking how I do this, I just switch to the other team, trade over whatever I need to trade over, and then switch back. I will also note that I'm going to be live on Twitch tonight, twitch.tv slash Bengal, probably playing MLB. And I'm live a lot of nights, so check it out. A lot of people don't know that I stream. I think you might be interested in it if you like the content and the personality, so check it out. Link, as always, is down in the description. And if you guys have not seen one of these off-season rebuilds yet, I'm going to get to every single team. So be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And we basically just pretend 2023 is 2024 with these new rosters. And so just 2023 is 2024. That's all you need to know. For the Cardinals, the unfortunate thing, and I'm going to change development traits too, by the way. Their first pick was Paris Johnson. I'm just going to give him star. But the unfortunate thing for the Cardinals is that Kyler Murray is going to be sidelined Probably a significant portion of the 2023 NFL season. Tough injury. It is what it is. I still think he's about a franchise-level quarterback for the Cardinals. They're just going to be pressed with a really tough in-real-life situation if they end up with like a top-two pick. If Caleb Williams is on the board, Drake May in that conversation as well, if one of those two quarterbacks is on the board... Do you just consider trading Kyler Murray? I'm not saying they should or should not. I'm just saying it's going to be an interesting conversation because you talk about the quarterback choice of a previous general manager in Steve Keim and head coach in Cliff Kingsbury. Now you got Monty Osenfort. You have Jonathan Gannon. Maybe they might prefer their own quarterback. And in a class, the way 2024 is shaping up to be with Caleb Williams and Drake May, it might be very tough to pass on a quarterback, and also you have the opportunity to maybe go out and get Marvin Harrison Jr. It's going to be a very, very interesting 2024 class. I will tell you, I believe the top-end talent is significantly better in the 2024 class than it was in the 2023 class, but there's still a lot of season left to be played, and we'll see how things go, but Marvin Harrison Jr. would be the first receiver off the board in this class easily. Drake May or Caleb Williams or both would be the first quarterback slash quarterbacks off the board in the 2023 draft for sure. With the offensive linemen, I think Olu Fashanu would have been the first off the board. Joe Alt maybe from Notre Dame. We got a long way to go until the 2024 class comes around full year. But um, I don't know. It, it, Kyler Murray's contract is in a really tough spot for Arizona. But if some team wants to take on the contract and trade for him, it could be a possibility. I don't know. It'll be a very interesting NFL year. I really like Michael Wilson a lot. He's just really struggled to stay on the field. Obviously, the experience is three years. It's not right. I have to change some things. Although, I can't change the experience uh, until these new rosters come out in Madden 24, of course. But really, really good player. Dominated the Senior Bowl. Uh, the you know one of the off-season bowls and he's just got to stay healthy if he can stay healthy i think he's going to end up being a really good player but health is a big concern with him i think i already mentioned garrett williams briefly i do like him we're going to play him not going to give him star dev although i will give bj ojalari star dev of course who could ever realize what those asterisks could mean yeah it's it's bj i wonder what that could stand for i wonder why that's not enabled uh, it sucks that doesn't let you do the name, but it's all right. We all know who we're talking about with BJ Ojolari. 
He's going to be a force to be reckoned with coming down the throat of every single quarterback on the opposing team. And we're going to have to go ahead and slide him down to defensive end. And he was a player I really liked. Didn't test super great, was injured, but had maybe the most advanced pass rush plan of any edge rusher I looked at in the 2023 class. And I think that's reflected here in these attributes that I have made for him. And 73 overall, I don't think is too generous for him. Uh, and he's just a very, very solid player. I think he's going to be a high floor player, even if he's never like an all pro, which obviously the ceiling there would be very tough to achieve. So few all pros in the NFL. But we're going to go ahead and slide him down to defensive end as long as we're in this 4-3 in the game. Although we really shouldn't be because Jonathan Gannon ran a 3-4. We could at least try it out. And we do have to figure out where to play everybody. I didn't realize that the Cardinals brought in Chris Barnes. BJ Ojolari will be a starter. They have Kaiser White. Why are we going to run a 3-4 with this? We have like eight off-ball linebackers. Unless you want to consider Isaiah Simmons something else, which is, is true. I think he has even played some slot corner for the Cardinals, which is interesting. I still feel like his best role is like box safety. But we have Buda Baker, who's kind of like a guy that does a lot of different things for this Cardinals team. He plays in the slot too sometimes. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to set this team up. It feels like we have a bunch of pieces of, of the puzzle, and there are actually different puzzles you find out as you're building it. And it doesn't really make any sense how it fits together. And that's a problem right now because the defensive line is so terrible. I like Cam Thomas. Don't get me wrong. Jalen Thompson's cool in the secondary. Buda Baker, I think, wants to be traded. We'll see if that ends up coming true or not. Um, we all thought DeAndre Hopkins would be traded, didn't end up happening. I don't really know how to set this team up. Because I, I ideally want Isaiah Simmons, Zayvon Collins, Chris Barnes, and Kaiser White to all play off-ball linebacker, but there's no defense that we're going to run that has four off-ball linebackers. There's just not. And if we're going to run a 3-4, we really only have two of them. I don't I don't know what to do. MyJ Sanders is going to play outside linebacker for us. He was good at Cincinnati. Ended up, I think, falling a bit in the pre-draft process a year ago in the 2022 draft. He got really sick before the combine and I think was only like 220 pounds or something. Something very light uh, for the position at the combine. But I'm looking at the outside linebacker options we actually have. Jesse Lucada, I guess, is one. My Jay Sanders. It's not really a bunch of good options for it. So I, Chris Barnes will be depth for right now. Kaiser White will start at outside linebacker, and then our rush ends will be, I guess, Ojolari and Cam Thomas. There is work to be done, especially on the defensive line. Do we end up moving to a 4-3? Yeah, almost certainly. The cat wants to get involved. I don't know if you heard that. If you did, apologies. But she says move to a 4-3 now. I say, you're a cat. You probably don't even know English. Uh, let's go ahead and simulate to the regular season here and get this thing underway. I don't think I'm going to be making any trades. We're just going to rock with it, see how things start to go, and uh, I'm probably just going to bench Kyler Murray for the first 10 weeks or so just to make sure that he doesn't steal the limelight when he's going to be on the bench in real life. I want that high pick. I'll, I, it's not cheating. He should be injured. Ooh, Luke Wilson? Is that Owen Wilson's brother? Maybe we draft him. No. Um... I do like the idea of outside linebackers being the best players in the class, especially like ones that are 250 plus pounds because they're going to be on the ball edge rushers, which is nice. We could take a quarterback. I'm not exactly looking to do so because we do have Kyler Murray. I have to recognize he's an 80 overall superstar development player. It'd be really tough to move on from a player like that. But at the same time, it could end up happening in real life. So if there's a prospect that's good enough... I would consider moving Murray to get it done. But we're going to start Colt McCoy this year. Hook him horns. Receiver core, pretty good. And I like Michael Wilson. You know, Hollywood Browns here, who should be a really great connection with Kyler Murray when everybody's healthy. And then, uh, obviously, Nuke is a tremendous talent. Rondell Moore is an up-and-coming talent. Trey McBride at tight end, Zach Ertz. Like, this team is not all that talented in a lot of areas. 
But where they are good, and keeping DeAndre Hopkins really keeps that receiver room pretty good, they are, you know, very good. Like, the safety combo, I really like. I love the receivers. I think the tight end room is actually pretty good. But uh, it's not a fantastic team overall. You know, certain people have called this the worst roster in football. I don't know if I would go that far, but they have a lot of holes. I mean, we saw that defensive line. It's not great. So the board has changed a little bit. Again, I'm really most interested in the edge rushers. Seems like there could be some good ones. I always look for elite athleticism at the position because you're going to find a lot of different prospects that are technically sound. That means, you know, their attributes are good. Finesse moves, power moves could be high. But the athleticism is what takes them to the next level. With a guy like Jalen Bozeman here, is 23 years old already, which I don't love. He is a power rusher with... Overall, pretty good athleticism and B finesse moves, meaning we're pretty much guaranteed that power moves will be an A. So I'll, I do like that quite a bit already. And there just are a lot of quarterbacks here that are supposed to go in the round one range. None of them particularly stand out to me. You know, we don't see A's across the board from any of them. Yeah, I, I was thinking that maybe one or two of these guys could be very athletic, but improvisers is the most interesting archetype here and the only a solid to good speed and the throw power you know is nothing exceptional so we're probably just going to keep kyler murray as our starting quarterback and there's nothing wrong with that you know kyler could be really really good for us all right i found the running but okay we're gonna take a running back in the first round it's just what's gonna happen a break tackle a juke move a spin move he is a good athlete maybe even a great athlete he is 23 years old already this is a generational running back prospect. I am convinced you just do not see those attributes. You just don't. So we should draft him. And running back is a potential need for us. James Conner exists, but it's kind of about the most that he does. I know he's a good fantasy producer, but um, I'm going to draft a running back. Just it's what's going to happen. Now, John Gaines, I haven't mentioned to this point, but he's somebody to really look out for. Uh, met some athletic requirements in terms of quickness which is really important for interior offensive linemen where you know a lot of these different players down the board who have tested out really well athletically in the short shuttle and in the three cone end up being kind of like steals down the board Jason Kelsey's one that comes to mind and John Gaines was somebody that was under that threshold it's the hit rate on interior or any offensive lineman really that runs a sub 447 short shuttle can end up being very, very good. It happens way more often than you think to find gems down the board. And John Gaines was at 4-4-5. Four, four, so he meets that criteria, could end up being a steal. Not purely based on that, but it is a big boost for him. He's going to end up starting for me at some point. We have Elijah Wilkinson, Cody Ford in there now. But I could definitely see him starting you know, over Will Hernandez maybe at some point. Uh, we could actually immediately start him at center, which... I think I'm going to do. In terms of, well, Clayton Toon, I have to make sure he has a four-year contract. He was in the rookie class. He's not 27. Things need to be changed. Things that you can't do before loading into the franchise. Kind of forgot about Clayton Toon, and I'm not sure that he ever plays a big role for the Cardinals, but he does exist. Andy Lee is 40. Matt Prater is 50 somehow. Cody Ford, I mean, he was a second-round pick by the Bills some years ago not too long but hasn't really developed i honestly think we're gonna let the entire class of soon to be free agents walk and we will probably not make the playoffs let's be real we're three and seven but we're building towards the future it's not about right now and we finished four and 13 pretty bad however pretty good for our draft pick you never want to tank obviously tanking doesn't really exist because you figure if you are the coach of a tanking team, you're probably going to get fired. You know, maybe sometimes the owner wants it to happen in the case of Steven Ross. Look at the Miami Dolphins. But it doesn't really happen. The players and the coaches don't do that. But I like that they have here. James Conner, 3.7 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns. You will be replaced, my friend. Awesome short yardage guy, no question. I think we found a generational running back in the draft that I talked about earlier. Zach Ertz has led the team in catches, yards, 
Touchdowns went to Rondell Moore. These numbers are bizarre, but we also didn't have Kyler Murray this year because of injury, so things could change. The tackles are insane. Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins both near 140 combined. Both had over 100 solo tackles, which is absurd. B.J. Ojolari also with an insane season. 107 tackles, 16 for loss, 10 and a half sacks. That's got to be rookie of the year. I mean, those are insane numbers. Cam Thomas had 13 TFLs. Nobody had over three and a half sacks except for B.J. Ojolari. Four picks for Simmons, three for Wilson. We got to figure out what this team's going to do. The offense was terrible. The defense was actually not awful in terms of yards. Dak wins MVP. I don't know. We may have had a rookie of the year in B.J. Ojolari, though. So getting him up to superstar development could be absolutely massive for the development of this team. Big stud edge rusher. We might get another one in the draft. So we could have a formidable defensive line just with the development of two players. And we could move back to a 4-3, which I think could certainly fit us better. Just the personnel, man. Coach of the year, Matt Rule. Unbelievable. Uh, Lamar Jackson, Offensive Player of the Year. Cooper Cup for the NFC. Defense Player of the Year, Aaron Donald for the NFC. And for the AFC, it was Miles Garrett. Now, I'm most interested in Rookie of the Year here. Show me BJ Ojolari, and we do. He wins over Kayvon Thibodeau, who, of course, is in the 2022 uh, NFL Draft class. But they do mix a little bit here in... Uh, the offseason rebuilds but that's big that's guaranteed superstar development i think so we're going to be sitting pretty in a really really good spot and he's going to be into the 80s right away now i wish i could have his name not be asterisks but uh, that's kind of where we are right now the 49ers beat the bills in the super bowl fred warner won mvp probably had an interception or a pick six it's usually how they decide that if there is ever a pick six that is guaranteed Super Bowl MVP, and that's all right. So I think all in all for a 4-13 and season, we did pretty well with accumulating stats or player development. That's the big thing right now. We do have available salary cap, but I just can't really imagine we're going to be spending money on anything. Oh, and Papo's here. He was also another draft pick by Cardinals this year. Really super athletic linebacker out of Auburn. And he's not 26. Got to change that as well. But eh, I don't know. Special teamer, maybe. We'll see if he develops in real life. As you can see, a lot of off-ball linebackers on this team. It's going to be tough to earn playing time. Okay, now this is an interesting quarterback. Awful athlete has a cannon. Very accurate. We're not going to draft him by any means. But this is as strong arm archetype as it gets. He cannot move. Physically unable but can throw with the best of them. Not going to be signing anybody. Uh, we do need a kicker and punter, actually, so I, I will do that. But other than that, I'm just comfortable with what we have right now. Evan McPherson is hitting free agency. But we're going to go after Jake Elliott. A couple of decent-looking interior offensive linemen I've added to the board as well, but I want to finish this out with... I mean, Heath Compton could be interesting to look at. Hook him, of course. I didn't see if he was a great athlete or not, which I should have. I think we're going to check out Tevin Shepard. I feel pretty good about the other players. So those are the three. We are drafting a running back in the first round this year. Guaranteed. Question is just where? Where did we end up picking? Number two. So we'd have to move up if we wanted Jalen Bozeman, which I haven't decided on yet. And the other pick is... At number... The Texans do well. 26? Oh, you're joking. I would also consider a trade down. Is Jalen Bozeman the guy? Block shedding's great. I love B block shedding for the edge rushers. A tackle. Very good athlete. Elite strength and great speed is a combination I'm in favor of. And obviously A power moves, A tackle. Very, very good prospect. No question about it. Maybe the second best player in the draft. The best player I have convinced myself is the running back. Whether that's true or not, we're going to find out. Elite speed off the edge. 
is something. 6'3", 255. Elite speed. I mean, ran into the 4'4s four at his pro day. A finesse moves. Block shedding is not terrible. Pursuit's good. Tackle's great. Man, I don't know. Brett Turbin looks pretty solid. And he's only 21 years old. So I like that. This is going to be a really tough decision. I have no idea what to do. And even Brandon Rush. I mean, he's a Rush linebacker. That's a great name. And also, is Brandon Rush an NBA player? Didn't Brandon Rush play on like the Warriors or the Jazz? And the Bucks, maybe? Let's see. Brandon Rush did play for the Warriors, Jazz, and maybe he didn't play for the Bucks. Um, but Warriors and Jazz certainly played for the Pacers and Timberwolves as well. Um, but yeah, kind of a throwback there. Kind of forgot he existed. He looks really good. B awareness, B block shed, A hit power, A pursuit, A play rec. All great. B tackle, very good too. Physically, very talented athlete. Great speed, great strength. I'm not sure that we can really go wrong in this class. We just have to decide, you know, who makes the most sense. And I really like the idea of Turbin or Bozeman. Bozeman's going to be gone. So then it comes down to Turbin who is a year younger than Brandon Rush and is a better athlete in terms of speed and acceleration. It just depends what we want. Do we want the speed rusher or do, or do we want the, uh, the more power-oriented player? B blocks at A pursuit, B, B tackles a great combo. Great speed, great strength, good acceleration. I don't know. I really don't think we can go wrong, to be honest. I honestly would like to come away with Turbin, Rush, and Lowry if that's possible. And we do have the trade, or I'll say draft capital, in order to potentially pull off two first round picks. So we might, we might see if we can somehow handle that. Taking a player at two, and then I think we'd have to trade up into the top 10 twice which could be really tough to pull off, which is where trading a guy like DeAndre Hopkins could actually end up making some sense for us, which I don't really want to do because he's good, but it might facilitate some other moves I want to make, which would make the team better. Maybe the Chargers, they can't afford him, so that doesn't work. All right, we've made a big move. It's, I know it's a crazy one. DeAndre Hopkins, a third and a third, number 74 and 66, for number four, from Philadelphia. So we have moved up substantially. We are still holding on to number two. And number four could help us get a little bit crazy. It, it, you know, it sucks to say goodbye to DeAndre Hopkins, but now Michael Wilson will get a chance. Uh, we obviously clear up a lot of money. We have Hollywood Brown, we have Rondell Moore, and we have Michael Wilson. Zach Pascal probably will not feature. I don't think he's 25 either. I think he's 23. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to get crazy. And I don't know where there's so many quarterbacks. Where did, or was I only looking at my oh, my watch list? I don't know the order these guys are going to go. Am I going to Am I going to be drafting them too early? So the the final mock draft had Turbin going at 7 and Rush going at 9. So I could trade down from 2 to like 9 even, but I I honestly would prefer like, seven. Okay, massive trade. I'm trading with the Seattle Seahawks. It's the number two pick, number 26, and a second round pick next year for number six and number 12. So we have really navigated the board, trading a lot of picks here. And uh, we've moved down just a couple of spots as Jared Anderson goes to Seattle. The Steelers take an outside linebacker, Felix Thomas. We thought that was probably going to be the order that those players went off the board. Quarterbacks are still there. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six quarterbacks in a row. We're going to go Brent or Brett Turbin here out of Miami. Speed rush type. And I recognize that we have B.J. Ojolari. Now, in my vision, it's going to be OJ, uh, Ojolari and Turbin off the edge. And then the power rush guy is going to start at 3-4 defensive end which would be a disaster in real life most of the time, unless it's like Trayvon Walker, but could be very, very good in the game. And it's nice to get hidden development. I'll tell you that much. 86 speed, 89 acceleration. We knew he was going to be a good athlete. 
We'll have to see what the attributes look like, but they should be pretty good as well. And then the Lions pick ahead of us. They go with Nigel Tucker from Louisville. And then at number six, we're going to be taking the other edge rusher, the more power-oriented one. And that is Brandon Rush. He's got great block shed, pursuit, and tackle. He's a very good athlete overall. And the skills are good. I hope power moves is an A. We know it's at least A to B, which is still pretty good. So we're going to be drafting him. He's only got normal development, which obviously you never like to see, even though I see it pretty often. 84 speed, 87 acceleration, decent athlete. 81 strength, I think, is going to be good enough to play defensive end for us there. So, you know, I'm happy with the player that we're getting. The development trait does not leave me a lot to be excited about, but that just kind of is what it is. And then I'm trading number 12 and a fifth and a sixth this year for number 10. I just want to guarantee I get the player I want, which, as you guys know, is going to be a running back, which is a little bit weird, certainly. A little bit weird, but I think he's going to be really, really good, so... Don't want to miss out on him. It's Ben Lowry from Mississippi State. 5'11", 233, by the way. 233 is going to be one of the heaviest running backs that you're likely to find. And let's see. Kai Allison's 234. Elton McCann, 234. Those are the only other running backs over 230. Kelvin McMillan right at 230. But it's rare to find that type of size in the draft, as well as this combination of athleticism ran in the four threes already insane elite acceleration great speed good agility which well, it's not amazing but elite change of direction elite jumping and the skills are just phenomenal he's a generational running back i feel really good about saying that hidden development 94 acceleration 91 agility which was just good by the way that's phenomenal 92 change of direction 92 jumping 94 speed with 74 strength He's going to be amazing. I would bet at least 83 overall. He looked incredible. We'll simulate to round two. And there goes the last quarterback, LeCambric Hightower to Green Bay. Not their best pick. Dustin Rush actually still available and Mike Coleman. So a couple of these quarterbacks are staying available. We have a center that is the last player we're kind of interested in. But I didn't really do a ton of research on this class. Luke Slate. Looks pretty good, to be honest. Be deep route running and be released. He's a deep threat at six foot five. He is a decent athlete. A spectacular catch. Medium route running is not terrible. Am I really going to take a receiver here? We got to replace DeAndre Hopkins, I guess. Got hidden development. 92 speed, 87 acceleration, 88 agility, 87 change of direction. He was not somebody I looked at pre-draft, but, you know, Kind of fell into our laps, and we jumped at the opportunity. Going to make another trade with the Eagles, our last move of the draft. It's 90-98 and 155 to move up to 66. And hopefully that center is going to be available. And that is the goal at round three, pick two. If he is not available anymore, I am going to just trade down, try to get a second round pick next year. But he should be still there. Jimmy Woods from Tennessee. A awareness, B pass block, A run block. Very solid athlete, especially in terms of movement skills, agility, change of direction, elite. Overall, just a really solid player. I expect big things from Jimmy Woods. Could be a starting center for us. John Gaines to guard. Will Hernandez, whatever. Cody Ford, whatever. And the offensive line is really starting to come together. I think that was an excellent last pick. And this draft overall, I think, was really, really good. Now, the edge rushers, I would guess, are anywhere between 73 and 76 overall. I don't think they're anything super special, but I think they're good. The running back, I think, is going to be out of this world, and I think the receiver's probably going to be in the same range as the edge rushers, you know, maybe like a 73, 74 overall, which is still decent. Now, I know we have Michael Wilson, but we might have just drafted somebody that could play over him, so we'll see. And... Yeah, so Brett Turbin's a 73. Brandon Bush, or, oh, I thought I said Brandon Rush this entire time. All right, well, whatever. Um, <laughs> okay. But 73, 74, right, kind of where we expected. Ben Lowry is an 85, so I guessed correctly that he was going to be a generational type player. 90 break tackle, change of directions, obviously great. 99 juke move. When you see a juke, you got to draft him. 
He also has aggressive catch, possession catch, and run after catch traits, as well as fight for yards. Spin moves pretty good. Yeah, he's incredible. He's already ranked as the 23rd halfback in the league, top 6% of all halfbacks. He's just incredible. He's guaranteed superstar X-Factor. He's going to start right away. Luke Slate is a 72. Jimmy Woods is a 72. Yeah, this is a really solid draft class for us. And let's see how much better some of the players we passed on were. So, pretty good receiver. Jalen Bozeman was a 77. So, that's obviously quite good. Yeah, he looks awesome. 84 speed, 84 power moves with 76 finesse moves. That's fantastic. He looks to be a really, really good player with also superstar development. We, had, we would have had a trade up to get him, which was doable. Felix Thomas is 75. Jared Anderson, who I passed on, I just usually don't draft defensive ends, is a 77. Normal dev. I mean, he's all right. I think we did all right, though. You know, obviously getting the running back was the real strength of the class, but there were actually quite a few high-rated players in this. You usually don't see a whole lot of 77-plus players. But yeah, not a bad draft class. So Lowry is going to start right away, clearly. We have Kyler Murray back. Woods can start at center, and he's a scheme fit. John Gaines, I'm probably just going to play over Will Hernandez, to be honest. I wish I would have given him star dev, but I'm going to leave it as is. Could end up being a starter for them at some point. I feel good about that, just based on athletic testing. Um, he's going to play some role for us. Zach Pascal is not going to make the team here. We're going to go ahead and cut him. Free up some cap space there. Penalty is minor, so don't really feel too bad about that one. And then we're, of course, going to play Slate over Greg Dortch. And that's not a bad receiver core right there. And Zach Ertz, Trey McBride, that's fine. Paris Johnson starting at right tackle. The offense looks pretty good. And then defensively, we got to move some things around. But having BJ Ojolari at Superstar Dev is pretty nice. Uh, I said that Brandon Bush, even though I called him Rush a billion times, will start at defensive end for us. We probably should just move to a 4-3. But I, I drafted two edge rushers with the thought of, you know, sticking in a 3-4. So he's going to go ahead and slide down to defensive end. And he's a 75 overall there as well. Uh, Likai Fotu at nose tackle, Cam Thomas, and then we have Ojolari and uh, Turbin going to start. Is he listed at left? Okay, we're going to go ahead and move him to right outside linebacker, and we got a pretty nice group going. Still developing, still a lot of development to do. He's wearing Daryl Washington's 58. Cardinals fans should remember Daryl Washington. He was a beast. Could not stay out of his own way, though. Obviously, need to improve corner quite a bit as well. I do like Cottrell Clark. Uh, the corner out of Louisville, probably a slot player, even though it didn't look great there in 2022. I don't know. Um, I'll move Williams up. We have Rashad Fenton, Marco Wilson. It's not a great cornerback room, but it's kind of like we're dealing with one thing at a time. I think we've pretty much solidified where the offense is going to be. I really like the offense. Defensively, still a bit of a ways to go, but we have the pieces in place. How are we going to do? I think I think Bush is going to be a rush D tackle. And then Turbin is going to be a rush end. Is that the best? I think so. Ooh, Isaiah Simmons has a breakout potentially. Okay. I don't know that he's going to get two tackles for loss or sacks in this next game. But it is possible, I suppose. Uh, we'll go ahead and simulate the week. Not going to trade Chris Barnes at this moment. Could end up happening. I really would like Isaiah Simmons to ball out, but we lost 38-21. I think it's unlikely that he accomplished his goal, even though our defense was on the field a lot of the game, it seems like, allowing 38 points. And he definitely did not accomplish what he needed to. So that breakout challenge is over. And we'll go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark here. It's nice to have Kyler Murray back. Hopefully we're a lot more successful in 2023. If not, a playbook change is imminent. Oh, we're 0-6. Offense is terrible. Defense is somehow even worse. A playbook change is imminent, as I mentioned. That's pretty bad. So, something's got to change. For sure. A lot of quarterbacks here at the top. Stan Kowalski, a 5'11 quarterback. What is this, 1940? This guy's a first-round pick? I'm out. We are going to wait until the end of the season to do a playbook change. But I'll tell you, it's a, it's a bad start. 0-6 is, you know, generally pretty bad. 
I don't think uh, telling any tales out of school there. We can all agree on that. I will want to bring back Hollywood Brown. He is back long term. He's our best receiver right now. You know, we traded DeAndre Hopkins. Had to be done. Isaiah Simmons, I do want to extend. Give him a seven-year deal. It's actually not super expensive if he develops the way I think he can. Kaiser White's going to walk. Bradley Pinion don't need. Shad Fenton. I mean, he's our best corner. That's like pretty sad. I'll give him a three-year deal. He wants to test free agency. I'm okay with that. Chris Barnes. Ooh. He's not super expensive. We should just probably trade Chris Barnes now, to be honest. Okay, I'm trading Chris Barnes and a third for Grady Jarrett. Jarrett getting a little bit older. Falcons looking to unload his contract. And that is a pretty awesome trade for us. Yeah, he's not really going to develop a ton because he's 30 at this point. But he's at least a huge upgrade over Fotu at the moment. Only star development. I get it. There are some reasons to not like Grady Jarrett here. But I think he's going to be a nice pickup for us. Not that expensive for us for the next few years. So we're in a good spot. Turbin has star development, by the way. And my running back hasn't been playing enough snaps, I guess, because James Conner was taking some of them, which that's fine for right now. He's going to have superstar X Factor. He's going to be a 90 overall in two years. It's not a big deal. He didn't make the playoffs. We went 1-16. in 16. Tyler Murray really holding the team back, unfortunately. That's what it is. I mean, this is an abysmal season. 30 touchdowns, 21 picks. Did throw for 4,500 yards, but the touchdown to interception ratio is not great. Lowry struggled a bit as a rookie. Only 950 yards and four touchdowns, four per carry. Murray keeps scrambling. Not too many attempts, so to be fair. Receiving Michael Wilson, what a great uh, second year for him. Even though experience is four, it is what it is. Hollywood Brown, Zach Ertz, Rondell Moore, all fairly productive. And then defensively, four players with over 100 tackles. Is, we're just on the field too much. Well, we got Grady Jarrett, to be fair, as well, who uh, has accumulated stats from the Falcons, so we can't really know how good he was for us. Eight sacks for Cam Thomas, seven and a half for Brandon Bush, seven for BJ Ojolari. Brett Turbin really didn't do a whole lot. He did have two picks, though. The, the team is bad. The team is really bad. We got to figure it out, and quickly. Cowboys, Ravens, Super Bowl. It's an interesting one. I think the Cowboys probably win here in the game. Playbooks are just better. 28-18, Cowboys end up beating the Ravens. Don't really see the Ravens make too many Super Bowl runs. Dak Prescott wins MVP of both the Super Bowl and the league. Cowboys playbook the move right now? Von Miller, Defensive Player of the Year. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to a 4-3 defense. And, I mean, look at look at all that red, dude. The only thing we were in the yellow and even. Top 20 in offensive passing yards per game, and it was 20th. Yeah, 1-16. in 16. Pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. But we will have the number one overall pick. We held on to that, thankfully. And we could potentially move that for a haul, which is what I'm going to look to do, I think. And as I mentioned, I'm going to let everybody walk. We're going to spend money in free agency. We're going to get better quickly. We need to take a big step. 1-16 in 16 is unacceptable. Dexter Lawrence is in free agency. Not going to go after him because he signed an extension with the Giants in real life. Same deal with Jalen Hurts. Justin Herbert would be cool. Christian Wilkins is kind of like one of those guys that remains unextended to this point. He could be interesting to go after. 28 years old, but is good. This would also really help us facilitate a move to a 4-3. We could offer him a big contract, play him at defensive tackle alongside Grady Jarrett. The Clemson connection. Giants going after him as well. Of course, no Dexter Lawrence is going to create a problem for us. Corner is a big need. Just don't see anyone that's really going to help us a ton. I really don't. Maybe try to steal Mike Hughes on a decent deal. Not really all that good. The offense, I still feel like, as I've mentioned, is in a good spot. I mean, like, DJ Humphreys is not the best. Ed Oliver's in there. We need Christian Wilkins. If not, I can pivot to Ed Oliver, but he might sign somewhere else. So it's kind of a tough spot to be in. We're just going to have to see what happens. If the Giants get Christian Wilkins, I'm going to be sad. I might just up his offer. And we did get Christian Wilkins. We're paying him a ton. 
He's got to be really good for us. Mike Hughes would be nice to get for cheap. Steelers and Chargers are kind of in the battle now. Steelers have surpassed us. We do need another corner, but I don't know if he's going to be the one. Levi Wallace seems like he might be a better fit, like a one-year Band-Aid. So we'll go ahead and offer Levi Wallace. I think I think we got a decent chance to sign him. Raiders are involved in that. We'll see what happens. Ooh, we didn't get Levi Wallace or the other corner, which is unfortunate. Uh, it would have been nice to get Mike Hughes, but Levi Wallace, I, th I think, would have made the most sense. Looks like he took less money to go to the Raiders. It's quite the decision. Christian Fulton maybe would be a decent idea. Not amazing, but decent. And Christian Fulton has signed on. So that's going to be all of our free agent moves for this year. We need to have a big offseason. We got to get better just across the board. And this number one overall pick, I need to leverage into a ton. Lowry, of course, has Superstar X-Factor, but Woods has Superstar Dev. What a trade-up for us. Did he get upgraded to that? No, he must have had it. That's actually an incredible draft pick now. Not better than the Superstar X-Factor running back, but still very good. And morale is kind of bringing him down a little bit. One of the oldest 23-year-olds I've ever seen. And, or looking-wise. Slate also has Superstar Dev, I'm noticing. We just knocked it out of the park with this draft class. Completely killed it. Now, the edge rushers, I wish, were the ones with superstar dev. But this isn't so bad. So Slate's going to end up passing Michael Wilson on the depth chart now, who didn't get star dev, surprisingly. Woods, going to be Gaines, Hernandez, and then Humphreys, Paris, Johnson on the line. Defensively, any changes? Not really that I can see. We're going to move to a 4-3. BJ Ojolari, actually, has got Superstar X-Factor now. Okay, that's quite the change. We got to move to a 4-3. It's just it's better suited for this team. So Ojolari's moved down to defensive end. Brandon Bush is going to start at left end. I'm leaving Turbin at outside linebacker. He's obviously not like a true outside linebacker, but that's where he's going to play for right now. Really good athlete. Hopefully it results in good stuff for us. We've got Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins at inside and outside linebacker, respectively. Safeties are pretty good. We need corner really, really badly. I thought about trying to trade for AJ Terrell. Just thought it'd be a little bit more difficult and also less realistic. So I opted to go a different direction. We need to have a big offseason. We are about halfway there, I would say. Got to kill the draft. And in order to do that, we have to draft a stud or trade the pick for a ton of picks plus a good player or something. We need to totally rejuvenate this team. 1-16 in 16 is one of the worst seasons I've ever had. So we got we to gotta be a whole lot better than that. I don't know. This draft class isn't really doing it for me. I think the safeties could be okay. But, I mean, we're really going to be drafting a safety? Not really. No, we're going to be trading out. Okay, so we don't pick until the fourth round after 1-1. One, one. What do we need here? Again, the offense, I think, is in a good spot. I've said that about a billion times. We could use a tight end, to be honest. Although, I think I'm just going to start Trey McBride over Zach Ertz. And then defensively, the line's coming along. We need a corner so bad. But I'm not going to trade the number one overall pick for a corner. I'd like a pick in a corner if I can figure that out. Okay, it is a massive trade. I am trading a first-round pick this year and next year for the Packers' first-round pick this year, Jair Alexander, and a second-round pick this year. It is a massive trade. I would have tried to get a first-round pick from them next year, but it's projected to be at number one overall. So it was being incredibly overvalued. But we got Jair Alexander. Now, that's not a realistic move, probably. But... We got better, and we really, really needed to get better. This safety looks very good, by the way, Glenn Scott. And we could get creative with Buda Baker and move him to corner. That would be really interesting. Jair also doesn't have Superstar X-Factor anymore, which is interesting. Still think he's one of the better corners in the league. Kind of surprised to see him not have Superstar X-Factor. The defense is coming along. Edge is also a problem, even though we've kind of invested in that position a little bit. We could trade Bush, move 
the other edge down and then trade for a linebacker but i don't i don't know what i'm gonna do okay trading number 21 and a fourth for jalen johnson got better at corner so we've uh obviously navigated the board quite a bit again but i think we came out on top there just got a really good player saints are offering us what could be a top of the second round pick next year for our second round pick this year i'm gonna go ahead and take that trade and I'll let the CPU handle the rest of the draft, which is fifth round and beyond. So draft recap, I obviously didn't end up drafting anybody. CPU snagged a couple players. And I usually let the CPU do it because they just fill out, you know, kind of depth holes on our roster that I'm maybe not even aware of. And this draft class was not anything special. Safety was pretty good, 77 overall, then a running back. Only two players rated 77 in the entire class. Nobody was higher. U76s, some 75s. Yeah, just really not a great draft class. This was the year uh, to go ahead and move out of that. So it's, you know, unfortunate that we don't have our first round pick next year in case we're bad again. But I've made some moves and really gone all in to not be bad again. So we really need to produce in this 2024, which is really the 2025 season. Tyler's got to be better. I think the offense will be better this year for sure, but, you know, they were abysmal a year ago. 1-16 is just beyond unacceptable, but the secondary looks great. I have questions about Bush and Turbin, but, I mean, we have, we have some real stars now. Need Bush to take a real step. 84 power moves is not really that bad. Just do I play him over Turbin? I know Turbin doesn't defend the run quite as well. He's not, you know, terrible. Block shedding is what here? 71. It's not great, admittedly. 81 finesse moves. He's just a better athlete. I don't know. I think we're going to leave it as it is. We just, I mean, somebody's got to break out. Plain and simple. The team looks pretty good. Not amazing. But they've got to they've gotta play amazing this year. Really, really do. You know, I honestly should have looked into getting something better on the offensive line it's not bad it just isn't amazing and i think maybe you know having something amazing there might be really helpful for our, uh, for our run game and our offense as a whole i'm not really sure how impactful the offensive line is in simulation in madden i usually just try to build up the team for the sake of building it up just to make it look better but we'll see how this season goes it's got to be better and the fact that we don't have a first-round pick, we are highly incentivized to not be bad. Let's see what happens. The playbook changes have been successful. Six and one. I'm, I'm using a Dallas, by the way, and Buffalo for offense and defense. So this is significantly better, obviously, but we also are way more talented as well. So it could be a bit of both. Buda Baker, Rondell Moore, Zayvon Collins, all free agents. Those are really the important ones. Zach Ertz exists, Marco Wilson, Will Hernandez, but these top three are the important ones. We should have the money to get it done. Buda Baker is going to be a little bit more expensive than I would like, but he is, you know, arguably our best player overall, so we have to keep him. Rondell Moore continues to develop really well, so we're going to go ahead and try to keep him as well. He doesn't want to be here. Might end up having to franchise tag him, which would really not be cool. Zabin Collins is five years i mean this this really isn't all that much money it never even gets more expensive than 10 per year and he could be a good investment for us as for the rest we can either wait on or i mean we're going to wait on we can either re-sign them or let them walk now our offense is only an 83 overall which i don't fully understand i feel like the receiving core is pretty highly rated it is Please stop putting Michael Wilson above Slate. Uh, I think I'm probably going to play McBride over Ertz. Trey McBride is just younger. Zach Ertz is so old now. It's just Kyler Murray, despite having superstar development, is really not developing that quickly. I think that's kind of part of what's been holding back this offense. But we're doing really well in this what is should be the 2025 season a playmaker archetype receiver is the number one overall player in the class it's interesting 
Yeah, great to elite for acceleration, agility, change of direction. Certainly makes sense. A short, medium route running? He might be a generational receiver. How do I get a high first round pick? I chose Jalen Johnson instead of a first round pick from Chicago. I kind of tried to get both at first. It didn't end up working out. But we could, we could try and get in position for that. And then Rondell Moore, we don't necessarily need. We could trade. But he's kind of like instrumental to our run right now. And I would still like to keep him. I don't know. That, that's a tough spot. It could be a tag and trade, as rare as that is. Trading a future one, four, and a three next year. Or the, the four and the, or the four and the three are this year, I should say. Excuse me. The one is next year. For the first round pick of the Bucks, who should be pretty bad. And now we're at least in position to draft that receiver if he does end up looking like a generational player, which he might be. Brandon Bush breakout challenge? Okay. That would be huge. If we could get him just to star development, now he could be a real starter on this team. Please beat Minnesota. And please accomplish the development trade upgrade. We won 38-21. I like the idea of this. Yep, roll out the red carpet. He's arrived. That's what he says. Star development, that's huge. And 5,000 XP. Absolutely massive. And... For seven and one, I, that's that's a really big change in this in this series in this rebuild video, I should say. Ooh, a tandem breakout. Even following a loss, twenty-seven twenty-four to Seattle. Don't love that, but I do like the idea of a breakout. Jalen Johnson. Let's just get the ratings boost because he's not going to get an interception. It's just the odds of that are so low. So. I mean, we'll, we'll get a little bit of a ratings boost. Maybe he can accomplish a goal, get better. All right, we beat them 44-24. We have a tandem breakout response. And I don't really know if that's... It, it seems like he, he is a goal. I don't know. That, that was kind of bizarre. Sometimes it's weird. Oh, I, I guess it wasn't the tandem breakout. I guess it was a breakout challenge for Rondell Moore. This is the tandem breakout. And yeah, Jalen Johnson was not able to make the plays he was hoping to. It's just so, it's, it's such a tough ask to say, hey, corner, go out there and get an interception. It just doesn't happen like that. You know, a good corner could get anywhere between two and like five interceptions a year. And that's a lot to do with targets. And obviously you see corners go out there sometimes seven, eight, even more picks than that. But it's extremely rare and it's often not necessarily indicative of skill. If you didn't realize at this point that playbooks are everything... Now, you know, number two offense, number one defense. And as you can see, Hendon Hooker led the league in passing yards. Kyler Murray bounced back in a big way, about 5,000 passing yards, 43 touchdowns to 16 interceptions, way better. Ben Lowry, just a yard shy of 1,300, averaged 4.6 per carry, 14 touchdowns. Overall, a great year. He's up to a 94 overall, by the way, at just 24 years old. That's why... Drafting a generational 23-year-old doesn't really matter because they're going to be unbelievable anyway. By the time their 25th birthday comes around, he might be a 99 overall. Hollywood Brown, Rondo Moore, both go over 1,100. Luke Slate had a pretty good year as well. Michael Wilson was a great role player. And the tight ends really aren't getting involved too much, which is fine, although Trey McBride did have seven touchdowns. But it's fine because we don't really need the tight end to get involved. It's the worst part of our offense anyway. Isaiah Simmons with plenty of tackles, but look at the pressure. B.J. Ojolari, 15 tackles for loss, 19 sacks, 13 TFLs for Jarrett, 12 for Brandon Bush, who also had double-digit sacks. Great overall production. Interception, 6 for Simmons, 5 for Alexander. The team is really starting to play well. We skipped the wild card game. So we went 14-3, and three, got the first round by. Now, the Dallas Cowboys is not the team you want to face in the divisional. Unfortunately, they are very, very good, especially good in simulation. So this could be a really tough game for us to win. We are using the Dallas offensive playbook as well. We'll see how we play against them. I think I'm going to jump in for this one. And I mean, the team is great right now. It's just I, I fear that Dallas might have our number right now. Michael Gallup is a superstar X Factor. Okay. Close and low scoring game so far. Dallas has a lead 13 to 3. We got to get on the board, and we do. 13-10 now. Defense is playing well enough. The offense is not matching. Three-point game, though. Dallas extends it back to 10. We're going to make it a three-point game again. 
And we gotta stop Dallas. I think it's gonna take us to the two minute warning here. It's gonna be third and three. And a much, much, much needed stop here. I mean, we can pretty much expect to run. They're showing run. We're gonna run commit. And we're hopefully gonna make a play. And that's how you do it. Tony Pollard completely shut down. We're gonna call a timeout. Get the football back. Two minute offense. Kyler Murray, our generational superstar X Factor running back. And not a great punt from Dallas. 39 yard line. Oh my goodness. That's so bad. That's so bad for them. All right. Move the ball down the field slowly but surely. It's late to superstar. We have Lowry. And I just want to see what he looks like out in space. That's not bad. That's a quick juke. 99 juke plays different, I'll tell you. Little lob to Moore. He can't hold on. Oh my goodness. How do you drop that? Good route. There's Hollywood. So we have to throw to Hollywood Brown, not Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore, I mean, that's a huge drop. Huge drop. We make up for it. Field goal obviously ties the game. Not playing for a field goal. We want the end zone. We want the win. Look at Trey McBride still on his feet. I'm going to go hurry up here. 34 seconds on the clock. Little screen here to Lowry. Look at the speed. Call a timeout. Only one remaining. The computer really wants us to settle for three. I really don't want to do that. Uh, that's a good route. Hollywood Brown! It's going to be a touchdown! Hollywood Brown finds the end zone with fewer than 20 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter. Hollywood. Beating the Stars. Dallas, I don't know. Um, their logo. I shanked the extra point. No, I didn't. I, I can't miss. I'm locked in. All right, four-point game. 20 seconds to play here for Dallas. And, uh, I mean, we should be headed to the conference championship. Dak having to will his team to victory here in crunch time. Yeah, I like our odds. I like our odds. Get to the quarterback. Dak on the move. Lobs it up. Ball floating. Will fall incomplete. He's had a great game, by the way. <laughs> He's had an unbelievable game. We're going to go ahead and blitz Christian Fulton here. Just get more of a pass rush. Nobody's getting to Dak. Eventually, Dak will lob it up. That's the ball game. No chance. Incomplete. We're headed to the conference championship. Another team who's great in sim. It's the Bryce Young-led now. Carolina Panthers. 85 overall to 86 overall. Bryce Young does not have superstar X-Factor. Andrew Logan does, though. I think he was the second overall pick that we had a chance to draft. Is that the same guy? I think it was, right? But he he had normal dev, right? I guess he just played so well that he's worked all the way up to Superstar X Factor. And we're going to have to get by him, Brian Burns, Bryce Young, and move on to the Super Bowl. Carolina on the board early. It's now 14-0. Offense needs to wake up, and we didn't find the end zone. Jake Elliott missed a field goal. We are getting housed this one's over it's 28 to 3 no one's ever come back from 28 to 3 before obviously i know a team who has atlanta falcons wrong bird team i guess we have a chance here it's going to be extremely unlikely and that's the most unbelievable pun i've ever seen where they pinned us down to the three game's over i mean it's going to take a miracle it absolutely is going to take a miracle that's pretty much what it's down to now Please don't fumble, Kyler. If we can score a quick touchdown and save our timeouts, you know, the game, it's not over. Our odds still just look horrific, obviously. That's not a bad play. Do we get plus 15? They really called that unnecessary roughness? That is one of the weakest calls I've ever seen. I'm down. I'll tell you, it'd be nice if a receiver would catch a jump ball every now and again. Right on cue for Trey McBride. We got to go for it here, unfortunately. It's fourth and four. I don't really like these routes at all. I don't know. But Rondo Moore. All right, that's a huge catch. That's a huge catch. That keeps us in the game. We need a touchdown so badly, and it's got to happen now. Ah. Get out of bounds, please. Running back out of the backfield. Touchdown. Okay. 
Ben Lowry puts us on the board again. We have 47 seconds and a dream. We have three timeouts. We can't allow them to get a yard, really. I mean, we have to figure this is a run. Please make a tackle, okay? I mean, we know they're running the ball. That's the worst part about this. Let's have to shoot a gap, make a play. And, and sometimes knowing they're running the ball can really hurt you. Because they just, they, they pick a gap that you're not ready to defend. That's a pick! I'm right there! I'm right there! Oh my goodness. All right. That's the game. We are going home unhappy. They throw it right at me and we can't do anything because linebackers are not allowed to jump in Madden 23. This game sucks. Panthers, Bills, Super Bowl. A couple of good playbooks. That's how they're in the Super Bowl. And the Panthers beat the Bills. Unfortunate that we were knocked out of the playoffs. Bryce Young wins Super Bowl MVP. A couple of Steelers in there. Uh, but nothing for us in terms of yearly awards. And we're not rebuilding at this point. We're reloading. And, you know, maybe that potential superstar receiver at the top of the board is what puts us over the top. Definitely something I'm going to consider. We have the Bucks' first round pick. Let's make the most of it. Rondell Moore is interested in being back now because we're now a league favorite for the Super Bowl chase. So we could change our offer and offer him something like this. Three-year deal and Rondell Moore returns. So that might change things a little bit. Lake Gillikin I'd like to bring back as well. We do have money. I kind of want to save like 35 mil. Oh, Will Hernandez got up to star dev. Okay, we'll bring him back. Just in case there's somebody really, really good. Oh, he declined. Well, I'm not going to franchise tag him. Where am I? No, we're not. We'll see what's going on in free agency. But basically what I was saying is I want to save a little bit of money in case there's a superstar that could just completely transform our team. And we're already pretty good. But if there's like a, a disgusting edge rusher that we can bring in, and just dominate the league with. I'd like to have 35 million available in case we got to pay him. Could use a backup running back that's not Keontae Ingram, I guess, but it's not a huge need. Like receiver is not a huge need, but sometimes you just take the best player there. We do need a guard. DJ Humphreys is not great at tackle, but he's not terrible. Jair Alexander up to superstar X Factor. Looks like my defensive coordinator quit on me. We could use an off ball linebacker. Defensive line is good. Could still use an edge rusher. All in all, though, we're just, you know, a tweak here or there other than just we got to get a guard. And uh, we should be back in Super Bowl contention. They had a new picture for James Daniels. I feel like I've never seen that one before. Which would be, it'd be a weird time to do it. But it does look like James Daniels. It just looks like not the picture they've been using for him. Anyway, we're going after James Daniels. And... Uh, we got Jeremiah Wusukoromoa as well. I feel like he'd be a really, really good fit for us. So we're going to go ahead and sign both of those players. So now we have an instant upgrade at right guard. We have an instant upgrade at right outside linebacker. I mean, we're ready to go. As I said, not rebuilding, reloading. Okay, NFL draft time. This is going to be the final one. We pick at number five overall. Could absolutely consider a trade up. We know Dylan Jones is a top five talent. I use my points on him. And physically... Very good. I mean, obviously incredible with the ball in his hands, but a short route running, a medium route running is kind of what's selling me here. So he's going to be a fantastic route runner who's amazing after the catch, even though that doesn't really matter in Madden too much, unfortunately. And I also checked out an edge rusher who is also a top five talent. Oh man. He blocks heading, A pursuit, B tackle. Very good athlete. A finesse moves, A pursuit, B block shed. Really good prospect for sure uh, and I checked out an off-ball linebacker as well who looked really good Lenny Boyd who's just around one talent but you know what I think it's going to be most fun to move up for Dylan Jones so we're going to go ahead and do that number five and number 61 moves us up to number one and now we don't necessarily need a guy like Michael Wilson anymore or even Luke Slate like I know we don't need Dylan Jones he just looks like the best player in the draft so Welcome to Arizona. He's got normal development. 92 speed, 94 acceleration, 94 agility, 95 change of direction. This guy's going to be like, what, a 79 overall normal development? 
What are we doing here? How does that even exist? Eric Weston goes at number four. He's going to be very, very good. Um, yeah, I'm very surprised to see normal dev. Like, really incredibly surprised. Here's a safety with A-man coverage. Hybrid. Uh, whatever. Welcome to the team. It's good depth. He's a 79 overall with normal dev. The safety is a 74. And we drafted a fullback down the board. He's a 73. So, nice find in Enrique Castillo. And Dylan Jones is the highest overall player in the class by quite a bit at 79 overall. Next highest is 76 for Weston. I don't know. Bizarre to see 79 overall. Normal dev. Definitely the best player in the class. 86 medium route running is awesome. Agility, acceleration, incredible. Short route running is really good. I have no idea why he has normal dev. One of those things... I mean, there are busts, but he's also just... How do you make a bust in Madden? It's tough, because the super hyped up guys, you just have to make them low overall and normal dev. But, you know, in this case, where you have a super high overall with normal dev... So you could make the argument, well, there's high floor and high ceiling players, and sometimes, you know, he might be guaranteed to be good, but that's it. But if he's already got amazing route running and athleticism, you know he's going to develop to be a stud. It's just bizarre. I, I don't know what they should do, but it's just, it's strange. Castillo has hidden dev. Okay. That's interesting. Team looks great. JOK is going to be a really nice addition to things. He and Isaiah Simmons playing the sub-linebacker role. Lowry taking over. We're going to have Dylan Jones in the slot. Garrett Williams in the nickel. Ojolari Bush as rush ends. Jarrett and Wilkins up the middle. I mean, this team really should be phenomenal. Got to go out there and make it happen. I mean, Lowry's a 95 overall at, what, 24? Maybe 25 years old. This really should be a dominant season. I'll see you for the playoffs. That's how confident I am. So as our team got better, we got worse. 10 and 7, but we did make the playoffs at least. So that is positive, although it was very close. Kyler Murray, where did the touchdowns go? <laughs> this was a way worse season. Did we just not score? I mean, Ben Lowry put up extremely similar numbers. Dylan Jones, maybe, in the slot? Kind of hurt things? I don't know. He's good, though. I don't know. We were just... We were so much worse. We just forgot how to score points. I don't know. That's so strange. I mean, the production on BJ Ojolari even went down a lot. Plenty of tackles for loss for the team. I don't know. It's just... Our offense went from literally best or second best in the league to not even a top 20 offense. I don't even know how that's happened. Our defense was still great. Our offense was just terrible. I'm going to put Hollywood Brown in the slot. Rondell Moore behind him. And then Dylan Jones. Bizarre. That's all I'll say. It is only the wild cards. We're not going to jump in. This should be a win, though. I mean, the Eagles don't have the best playbooks. I keep going to that. We win 9-7. to seven. Why is the offense so bad? Our defense, unbelievable. 9-7. to seven. And This is an 83 overall Packers team. We got to be able to beat them as well. I don't know why our offense just stopped offensing. <laughs> I don't know. That's not a word. The fact that they won 11 games is absurd. And that, that's a little bit more like it. 35 points. 35-14. to 14. We're definitely going to jump in for this Cowboys game. I don't trust them. I don't like them. And I'm worried about what could happen with them. It's just, it's five points. Yeah, he's a beast. This is the first matchup I'm truly worried about. They're a 90 overall. We've seen them before. We're an 88. This is going to be a tough one. And of course, the Cowboys are up early. It's now 10-0. Our offense, again, is not showing up. Our defense isn't really either, to be fair. We need to score. We need to score. We're on offense. I need to take a drive here. We have no momentum. Dallas just turned over the ball. I don't know how we have no momentum off that. We have to do something. Is that an offensive lineman? I think Ellerby's an offensive lineman. It's a sick play, though. So I guess at this point, I really can't call three tight end set plays. That results in disaster. Oh, that's a nice throw. Hollywood dropped it. 
Dude. Why are we dropping the ball? It's so crazy how easy it is for the CPU to hold momentum. Also, I really thought that was a streak. I don't know why that route was rounded like that. So that's my mistake, I guess. And uh, Dallas is going to punt. We need to move the ball in simulation here. There we go. That's a big play. 26 yards to Dylan Jones. That's going to end up being a touchdown, surely, here. And we're going to tie things up at 17. Into the fourth quarter now. We punt the ball back. Dallas is driving slowly but surely. And they're actually going to stall and punt the ball back to us. Third and four. We're jumping in. Didn't really see anybody get open, though. I'm... I feel like because I haven't played Madden consistently in so long, I kind of have forgot what works and how to uh, move the ball consistently. I just want to take off with Murray. It's going to work in this instance, though. That's a nice gain. We got to go deep here. Jones down the sideline. The corner took away everything. I don't know how we don't have a touchdown on that. 15 yards is going to be really, really tough to get. I think that's open enough. Hollywood Brown catching traffic. What a huge play. Dallas forced to call a timeout. We are into field goal range. Unbelievable throw from Kyler Murray and Hollywood Brown with a drop already in this game with an incredible catch to maybe put us through to the Super Bowl. And Lowry's going to just set us up for a chip shot field goal. Here we go. Couple extra yards. From the 10, all we have to do is make a 27-yard field goal with Jake Elliott. This one feels easy. Kick up and good. Right down the middle. We're headed to the Super Bowl. Cowboys going home. And we are one win away from a title. And we are facing the Buffalo Bills, by the way. Dylan Jones up to star development. Not a huge surprise there. Um, yeah, he'd be, he'd be a fun player to use long-term. Just, I can't believe only had normal development as a rookie. That, that's probably the most shocked I've been in a while about a player having normal dev. We're playing the 84 overall Buffalo Bills, by the way. Speaking of how impactful playbooks are, yes, Dio's going to have star dev. He's a fullback. I'm not even going to show that. Uh, offensive line looks good. Paris Johnson's developed a little bit. No dev trait upgrades for the defense, but BJ Ojolari was really the star of the show. And thankfully in the Cardinals real life draft class, he was awesome. Murray didn't really develop a ton, but on offense, the story is the generational running back Ben Lowry playing up to a 99 overall at just 25 years old. He is incredible and he hopefully will help us win a Super Bowl here. Cardinals Bills in Atlanta. Let's go get it done. Buffalo strikes first with a field goal. Jalen Johnson with a big interception. We don't get any points off of it. Do end up scoring very quickly, though, after that and end up taking the lead. Buffalo grabs it right back and quickly, 23-14. We are not doing enough on offense. And that was a bad play, whatever just happened. I think Kyler may have thrown an interception. It's 31-14 out of nowhere. And Buffalo has the ball again. Is Kyler turning the ball over? What is happening? Kyler has thrown three interceptions in this game. I mean, that is just insane. I don't know how we're supposed to win when that happens. We are going to need a miracle to come back. Murray down the field. We're not going to catch it because why would he? We need a quick touchdown so badly. I mean, no way around it. Coverage too tight. That's a great route. There we go. Rondell Moore again. Now inside the five. I think the reality here is it would be obviously great to win this game. But when your quarterback throws three interceptions, fumble there, I, I thought we would have had a touchdown. Uh, but three interceptions, you just are really not often going to be in a position to win the game. I don't know how we can't score on that. It seems wide open up the middle right there. I keep trying it. Don't hurry up throw a touchdown to Hollywood there. It's just, it's too big of a hill to climb. 34-21. We're not out of it. It's just, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard. It's a good start though. Hollywood Brown takes us to midfield. Last play before the two-minute warning. I really thought we had that corner route. 
and then he just really didn't run it. Murray diving end zone. All right. We're not out of it yet. We just can't allow Buffalo to do anything. It's going to be really tough to stop Josh Allen. We have three timeouts. They cannot get a first down. Shoot the gap. Make the tackle. All right. Good start. I can't run commit because they could end up doing something else. But, I mean, this is surely a run. I'm just going to move Buda Baker. Let him make a play. Fill the lane. you got to make a tackle. That's too many yards. How is he sneaking through? We're run committing middle. If this is the game, this is the game. It's got to be done. Play action! Allen sack! Timeout! That is the worst time for play action. We sent the house. Allen nearly got the throw off, but he couldn't. Touchdown wins us a Super Bowl. This would be a miraculous Super Bowl comeback. Although not the greatest of all time. We referenced that a little bit earlier. It did involve a bird team and an AFC East team, though. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Hopefully all of you. It's biggest Super Bowl moment ever, probably. Or biggest Super Bowl finish. I don't know. It was crazy. Oh, look at that play from Kyler. Broken tackle by Lowry. Oh, my goodness. Lowry putting the team on his back. Although, Kyler, fancy footwork to get that done. Open. No pick. Hollywood, what a catch! I mean, it was a crazy was even contested. Felt like he was so open. But oh my goodness. Okay, touchdown and an extra point wins us a Super Bowl. That's what we need. I don't I don't like what's happening. We're going deep. We found a linebacker. Matt Milano made the play. Oh, that's a joke. Taking nothing away from Matt Milano. He's a great. Uh, coverage linebacker. That's a mismatch. Oh my goodness. We're down to the one. Taron Johnson looks like he's five foot two. Got mossed. Oh, we got to snap the ball here. There's suddenly eight seconds. Back of the end zone. High point. He, he had his foot out of bounds. Oh my God. Dude, I can't believe they were making me watch an animation. Taking time off the clock. We go. Oh, why can't I go? QB sneak. Run up the middle. Lowry with the power! Ben Lowry got met in the gap and ran him over. Trains coming through. Get off the tracks. Unbelievable end. Look at this. We were shut down and Lowry gave him the shoulder. And Micah Hyde ate it. KO. And an extra point will win us a Super Bowl. Kick is up and good, and we've won it all. A miracle doesn't even do it justice. Buffalo will need every player on the field to have an aneurysm. I mean, it's, it's over. Great catch. We've won it all. What a comeback. Kyler threw three interceptions. And you know what? Come fourth quarter, made plays, made it happen, won the Super Bowl. Uh, I really didn't think we'd be winning a Super Bowl in this video. After the collapse last season, and then, I mean, we were down so big in this game, and then three interceptions from Kyler, I thought it was over. But we've managed to do the impossible. Josh Allen is hyped for us, because why wouldn't you be? Such a stupid celebration. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video, guys. Unbelievable finish. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. Check out the stream, twitch.tv slash bangle live tonight. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.